to fail. It'll never happen again. Never happen, never happen, happen again. again. Wisconsin's Richard Dick Trickle, the White Knight, was already famous winning over a thousand short track races when he came south to NASCAR. However, by 1995 and many rides later, he left Bud Moore's number 15 team and was looking for a seat for the 1996 Cup season. And by January of that year, an opportunity arose. But wait, January 1996? A month before the first race of the season? The Daytona 500? The biggest event of the year? One of the biggest races in the world? Time was now of the essence. I've always was good friends with Dick Trickle. We raced together, we knew each other. And when I moved here, he was kind of, he, they were our extended family when we moved here. And got to be good friends with the, the whole family and spent Thanksgivings and Christmas at their house and things like that and anyway in 96 he didn't have a ride and in January late January of 96 I get the phone call from Dick and he goes you want to go to Daytona I said yeah what he got going he says well I got a guy that wants to uh, put together a car he says I'll come pick you up in a half an hour and I said, okay. He shows up at my house with his little old half-ton pickup truck and an open trailer. And we go down to Kenny Bernstein's shop. And the, the uh, fellow that bought the car um, already paid for everything. Well, I'm originally from the Midwest near Chicago, closer to the Joliet area. And um, I raced myself and uh, got started at an early age riding my bicycle over to a guy's house in town named Paul Bauer that had a late model. And uh, I also want to let people know that I grew up with polio and so I didn't play stick and ball sports and he suggested by yelling at me, hey kid get over <laughs> here, that I help him on the race car and he didn't care if I had six legs or five eyes or anything. I, I had two pair of hands and was a a help and I was enthusiastic about it and the rest kind of goes to history where I ended up finally getting my own race car and racing myself and I raced throughout the Midwest I've run Arca um, I have run Talladega and, and uh, Pocono and other places like that to give you a little backstory I run the team for Lake when we did the Purex um, laundry turn and um, then that deal ended mid-93, and um, I think our last race was in Hampshire, I think. Okay. Was. And that was the last race that Davy Allison, he passed away that following week in yeah. Daytona. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they took the week, they took Michigan off, I think it was, maybe we went to Michigan. But anyway, Yates didn't go to that next race after right. that. And the next race after that was Sears Point. And Robert reached out to us about needing a driver for Sears Point and Lake, of course, having the road racing. Right. Uh, road course. That's right. Lake did drive that car. You're at the 28. So um, Lake drove, went to Sears Point, drove that, and that's when um, Bud Moore was putting the quality care deal together. And so we got Lake down to Bud Moore in Spartanburg to drive for the 15 car. I think that's yeah, there's a shot at Kyle Shannon. <laughs> yeah, well, Dick that was went there after that. After that, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And um, so um, that's when, I, in 95 then, is when I started saying, well, I'm going to put my own deal together and start, start reaching out to sponsors. And, you know, we were making presentations and meeting people and... Then in December of, <laughs> of 95, 
prior to the Daytona of 96, a few weeks later. Where were we all these months before? That's right. <laughs> was when Daytona uh, was coming around and Purina said, we'll do, we'll, we'll do, pure, we'll do uh, Daytona for sure and see and build on it from there. So the, um, okay from Purina to do the um, 500. And so then we started all thrashing to try to make it, <laughs> pull it together. And so, you know, then we were kind of looking around like, who's going to be the driver? And um, I'm thinking it was, it was either Lake or Phil. Okay. And Dick, and then we got in touch with him and um, got picked up from there. And that's when Dick said, well, um, he, because I remember him in some media interview, said, first time I went and met Britain, he didn't have a car, he didn't have a shop, he didn't have anything. <laughs> and, uh, True story. He said, I got a little deal cooking. He said, we're going to have to thrash hard. He said, I'll come pick you up. Well, I hear the horn beep, and I look out, and that's not like him usually gets out of time knocks on my door, and I look out, he's got his little pickup truck in his trailer. <laughs> I said, what are we doing? He said, well, we're going to go get the car for Daytona. And Dick said, well, um, he, because I remember him in some media interview, he said, first time I went and met Britain, he didn't have a car, he didn't have a shop, he didn't have anything. <laughs> and, uh, true story. And, but that was true, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> it was nothing. I, yeah. We had the sponsorship, and and so um, he uh, he said, he suggested, um, uh, it's Alan, what was his name, in, in Shelby? Um, Ken Allen. Ken Allen, yeah. Because he'd driven for him before. Yeah. You know. And so we um, got that car from Tri-State or Tri-Star when they were that Boy Allen with the Health Source, I think was the. And they were in Quaker State shop though, right? They were in the old Bernstein shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, they were right up in Huntersville. Yeah. And that was their third Speedway car, and Mark um, gave us that gave us a deal on that car and because they weren't going to use it they, you know we take two cars and so <laughs> that was right. our third so it was going to stay in the shop and so we picked it up and took it down to Kenny Allen's shop in Shelby and started thrashing on it in wow. late January I mean we were to leave like February the 4th or something yes because yeah, that was my birthday night. yeah we came down here it was January, it was very, very cold and windy that night, I remember that, and we went inside and mingled and, and talked, and, and then, uh, like I touched on a little bit before, um, we kind of went back and forth with Jeff Hammond about which parts do we get, you know, these were marked for this car, but you want us to take these parts, and anyway, they went to go uh, consummate the deal, and then Dick came back and winked at me and says, "Hey, load up them parts, load up the good parts, you know." And, and so me and the other guy, that was just some guy that they had, we started taking up carts and rolled them over by Dick's pickup truck and loading them in the truck, and uh, got all those parts loaded. And then me and this guy and another guy, we loaded the car and had it strapped down. And Dick came walking out quite a bit later, and then, and just by himself, and he said, "Okay, we're all set. Let's go." And we drove out of here and we had the right car parts for the right car and that helped us in assembling the car and getting it done in the short amount of time that we had to get it done anyway so that all helped and uh, that was a little bit of uh trickery from dick trickle you know <laughs> so, only a trickle could pull that off yeah, right yeah. yeah but that's how dick was i mean he, he was he really was what you saw is what you got he was just a good guy you know once this whole deal started falling together, it was like, okay, where do we take it? Where can we work on it? And he called Kenny Allen, and I think he did that before he ever even came and picked me up because we needed, we had to have a facility. Yeah, so if you can see all the way at the end of the building yep. where that cat's running. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's a little awning there, and there was a little window there, and we were using Kenny's, going to use Kenny's building here, but all of a sudden, 911 happened, and we had to get out here and we had to take his pictures down and put put Breton's uh, pictures up because the sponsors were coming to check on us. So we had to make off like this was our shop. We had a big snowstorm on and off that time. And I'm going down the interstate, I get, and I go down 77 to 85, and I'm going down 85, and 
I'm saying to myself, there's no traffic out here for today for some reason. <laughs> but being from the north, we don't care. Right. We and just I, keep going. I, I don't know if I'm in the middle lane or on the shoulder. I, I'm just right, driving in two ruts. And uh, I look in the mirror and I see flashing lights coming. And, the, and they're getting closer and closer. And finally the cop gets right on my bumper and I, I pull over. And uh, he gets out and he's yelling, he's mad, he's yelling at me because, what are you doing out here on my highway? My highway's closed today. <laughs> and uh, I said, I'm going to work. And, and uh, then I even said the wrong thing because I was still pretty fresh down here. I said, well, I'm from the Midwest. I said, I'm used to driving in this kind of stuff. And he goes, I don't give a damn where you're from. Get off my highway. <laughs> and uh, he actually made it more treacherous for me to get here by taking side roads. <laughs> here, the Super 8 was the only thing here. There was nothing here. I mean, just a two-lane two road out here. Yeah. And, and so I had came here and paid for the room earlier. And like I said earlier, I um, we got here at somewhere around 2 o'clock in the morning, and they had gave our room away. And then we had <laughs> eventually had to share uh, a one uh, queen-size bed. So, I mean, that's... Not so you're a, in desperation mode the whole time. Absolutely. And, that, and now we have no choice because we can't go home now because we let the snow build up too bad. And... And now you got this timeline, you know, the, the Daytona 500 1996 was run February 18th, but you're not getting down there the 18th, you're getting down there the week before. Right. And which means you have to leave a couple days before that. Well, from here to Florida is what, eight, nine hours? Um, so, ten hours? In a, in so, a car, seven hours. So, in yeah, a hauler. hauler. It's ten, ten hours, maybe eight so hours. So, you got, there's another day, you got to count to leave. So, like you had said before, when we talk about this story, from 18 days out well you don't have 18 days you have roughly two weeks well exactly because the 500s on the 18th and then uh, uh 17 16th the 15th is the 20, 125s and you have practice and qualifying prior to you gotta that. be there for so we yeah. have to be down here by tuesday at the latest yeah you know and, and so you take 18 days and then you get so, to inspection with a new car right, oh my right, gosh right. are they going to be honest like you know uh white on rice uh, you know, what are we going to have to fix? What are we going to have to move? And even though we're back markers, not picking on NASCAR again, but even though we're back markers, they're picked apart our car like you can't even believe. We had to change things that, I mean, just silly things. And it was a car that obviously, I mean, the parts had obviously run before. Right, that car had run before. But it's even more stringent now. I mean, I mean they, you can, now. yeah, no. oh my gosh, you know. And, and so, even though Dick Trickle shows up. Correct. Doesn't matter. We don't know who your guys are. Let's make sure the car's safe, quote unquote. You know, and let's make sure that uh, every piece is on right. And it's like looking at your watch is going, okay, practice. <laughs> well, I mean, we saw the condition of the building that wasn't like that at all. That right. road where them cars were parked and all them weeds, that was just a, a, a nice road to go back to the shop. And that is all deteriorated. And I'm bringing that up because even something that people don't remember, NASCAR has changed all along. Right. Obviously, you got to grow. We don't ride around in wooden wagons anymore. <laughs> and... Um, NASCAR had a rule that at lunchtime they closed down. The right. track was cold. The garage was cold. You had to get out of the garage, close the garage doors. You can't. That's a long you didn't have time to go ago. Home. You could go to the back of the hall and eat a bologna sandwich, but you couldn't go in the garage. Okay, looks like Monday night, the uh, the twelfth of February. You're uh, you guys are heading. You guys are all packing up the truck. What kind of, I mean, it wasn't a, a, a transporter. It wasn't a yeah, semi-truck. Yeah, it was a, some, it was a semi-truck. It was a, I don't know whose it was. I, I, I know it wasn't Allen's, but it was a, It was actually a truck transporter, so maybe it was Allen's because it was, it was pretty sparse as far as uh, what we know of as haulers today. But, uh, yeah, we put in some long hours the last few days, and I think uh, Rodney and, and uh, one other guy and myself, I put in almost 24 one day, and then... Uh, Sunday we got there early in the morning and worked through till Monday afternoon and then pushed it outside and started loading and so the truck driver could head down the road. So I know it's illegal. You can't ride in a trailer, but was anybody in the trailer doing anything while you guys are in the No. Um, <laughs> like I said before, we went and rented a minivan and there was like six of us for sure in a minivan plus luggage and other vehicles went down too. And I went with the crew... Um, I could have went with Dick, but I I, I went with the crew because I was already at the shop there, and, and uh, he wasn't going till later or first thing the next morning or something like that, you know. Um, but uh, that's that's you know we've we put in some. I mean, 
the way the paint was still wet when we <laughs> were loading it. You know, I mean, it, right. uh, and and Brenton's dad painted the car too. That was part of the whole thing. Was he was a body paint got body guy had a body shop in uh, Southern Illinois somewhere, and he wanted to to paint the car. But it all all happened quite quick. I mean, it just you know, and, and just a lot of good volunteer help. Now, I don't know how much you talked to Britain, but I mean, was was he aware? Like, okay, this is really tight schedule. We're really, you know, the parameters are really close. Or was Dick kind of like, oh no, we got plenty of time? Or did, did were you in on any of that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Britain was do, away doing other things. He wasn't really hands on there. I think he was organizing the money and a lot of things. You know, just trying to keep all the loose ends tied up. Uh, other than his dad painting the car, he was not around um, that much and um, just putting everything together. And Dick was there every day but uh, but that Saturday night that we put the 24-hour in. You know, he was taking care of family and stuff, you know. And uh, um, we, we were really, really under the gun. And we were all beat when we got there, but we had to uh, put our big boy pants on and carry on, you know. So now we're heading down down the road. I mean, there wasn't any. You said there was already snow here. There wasn't any. Probably no more inclement weather past here. I'm sure. Any no, I think once we got into South Carolina, it was. I remember we we left and and didn't see any snow or any bad weather all the way down. Not like there'd be snow, but I mean, any any issues or no. Um, and the old configuration of the garages. We were over in where <laughs> across from where the Unical pumps are now. Yeah, yeah. And oh, and boy. where the haulers were parked and then the old corrugated uh garages with the wooden benches in them were still there at that time. And obviously we we're furthest away from the garage and our 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 garage stall was on the other side of the garage to, you know, which making trips to the hauler were <laughs> not necessarily my job for sure and we the obvious reasons, you know. And not only that the Arca cars uh, and the IROC car shared the garage space, so Trickle's got to go all the way to the one end, yeah. all the way back, yeah. all the way back. <laughs> yeah, that's why that when Jay Signori came that time and hollered at him, Trickle, we got to go. You and I thought, man, that's that's really big of Jay himself to come down instead of sending <laughs> a, you know somebody to shag uh, shag Trickle to get over to the IROC garage. You know, so you do when you guys pull in. You know, or they're like, oh, 60, 63, what? And, you know, <laughs> any kind of, kind of, move, what? Who, who, what? What's going on here? <laughs> um, It was pretty casual back then. I mean, it wasn't, there wasn't. Obviously, you're on their entry list. I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, but I mean, it, wow. it, it wasn't like doing here? <laughs> all the eagles like now, you know what I mean? And, 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 you know, you had your players back then still, you know, you still had guys that were still running, you know, that from the, from the bygone years you know what I mean and and new players and what have you and um I I, I want to say something before I forget the earlier like you told me the best compliment you ever got in your life you were telling me about what Ron said to you so Dave Marcus was on the in the garage stall in front of us and good friends of trickle they know yeah, absolutely and yeah. I rock tester and, and, and tester. whatever and I knew got to know I started getting to know Dave pretty good and I know Dave's a pretty much of a one-man band, but probably all of my racing, I got the best compliment from Dave Marcus. Is he? I was by the bench, and he said, well, can you do me a favor? I said, what do you need, Dave? He said, will you look at my plugs and tell me what, what you think? So even today, I would think that he was either testing me to see if I knew what I knew, or he was actually just trying to get a second opinion, or both. And uh, I said, well... Be honest with you, I said that it looks like number five cylinder has got some debris on the nose of that plug. I said it looks like maybe some piston. He said that's what I thought. He said we're going to change it. I'm not taking wow. a chance. Wow. Okay. And I thought that was just so cool for me yeah, and being yeah, a yeah. you know and and so I mean that's just one of the fun things that happened while we were down there. And, and How well had you known Dave up until then? Um, casually. But he knew of me and knew, you know, and then he, Dick always talked highly of me to him, you know. And he'd had a new crew chief yeah. uh, heading into that race, I believe, but uh, Frank and him had split up. Right. Terry right. Shirley was now there, uh, crew chief and there, so. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, that was a, a pretty pretty neat deal. Yeah. And yeah. Terry knew me, too, so. That, yeah, you know. Terry knew you. 
Yeah. Wow. That's no joke. Uh, you know, mechanic like Dave Marcus. I mean, <laughs> oh, oh, another, like you say, another one man band. <laughs> yeah, he didn't you know? need anybody from Champion to look at his spark plug. <laughs> I mean, he, he knew what he was. He came to the. He came to the, the best, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so now, now we're at the track. We're unloading. You know, I'm, are we saying, "Oh crap, we forgot this"? Uh, hey, you got to run over here to borrow that. Hey, can you run over here to grab that? It was any of that. Or? There was quite a bit of that running to an auto parts store or a hardware store. Getting. Did you know that was going to happen when you got there? Were you like, "Oops"? Not or necessarily, but of... like we were. Being it was just such a pickup deal, we were. You know, we didn't have duct tape that we needed, colored duct tape. We didn't have. Uh, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff. Awkward. And and, and, and and being on such a budget, you know, we just couldn't run over to the hutch truck and get whatever we wanted, you know what I mean? And there's a funny thing you say there. For example, I know this, you know, fans may go, oh, big deal. But back then you could use a thing like duct tape. You can't yeah. use that anymore. That's Right, right. No, that's... Outflow. You can still use an Xfinity, but you can't use it. In, but, Xfinity and trucks, you can still use it. But not, not cut. Not you got to use yeah. the, the bearer bond stickers. And, right. And, then, and there's probably a lot of stuff you know, that you cannot use on a car anymore, that you can run out to the, you know, I mean, and, and just think, if you guys are at MIS, you ain't running no auto parts. No, there ain't no. one. No. <laughs> you know, Indeed. Daytona, it's in Daytona, but like an MIS or a Pocono, ain't no, you're like driving for, 15, for, 20 minutes to get the one. Even even going and getting cut Kentucky Fried Chicken one day was a <laughs> treat for us, but it was, somebody had to do it. And I, I don't do remember if, I, if Kelly did it or, or Vicky did it, and Kelly was our PR girl at the time, and but somebody went and did it. And said, I don't remember. Nobody passed the hat, so somebody paid for it, and we had a nice treat of Kentucky Fried Chicken for for lunch instead of bologna sandwiches. But did you have run. a chance? And how'd you have it? You have a tool in one hand, and you know a greasy piece of chicken. Well, not necessarily <laughs> because, like I said earlier, the garages closed back then, That's, and they shoot right. us out of the you're garages. Right. I mean, they literally came down and would pull you by your shirt and get you out of the garage and close the door. And you couldn't go back in until they announced that you could go back in. Yeah, because those weren't the open, like the Arca garages Correct. were open. There's no Correct. way you're throwing them out. I mean, you could throw them out, you but, know. you know, you're not closing the door and then, you know, they'd still be standing there. But so I mean, you, even nowadays, it's progressed so much. And even on the local level, you know, like the like the, like the uh, Snowball Derby coming up, it's a week-long deal. They're on the track sporadically all day, every day for four or five days. And the money, they're, so they spend twenty twenty five thousand dollars $25,000 on tires. Well, even in... I don't know if it was Big Bill or, or, or Bill Jr. or somebody had the wherewithal back in those days that said, no, close the garage, make them get out. They need, everybody needs a break, take a break. If they were <laughs> open 24-7, some crew chief would make us be there going. You know, and, <laughs> that's that's very true. You know, so. True. Now, is Dick, like you say, Dick's running around doing IROC, but is Dick also running around doing press? Or 50-50, uh, a little bit here, a little there, bit there? Yeah, I mean, he, he, he used his time real wisely, trust me. And he tried to spend as much time in the garage that he could, in, in with us as he could, and talking with Rodney and trying to get, make sure that we were all on the same page and getting ready to go, you know. So what's the setup you guys are putting up under the car, you know? You got, do you remember details? Uh, I didn't work on any of that, to be honest with you. I was so busy doing other things, prepping the motor, different things like that. I was still the motor guy, you know what I mean, so... Um, Making sure nut, that nut's tight, that bolt's here, yeah, the, the this goes there. The obsession that we used to do in those days and warming the gear up and the transmission and all that stuff and, you know, setting valves and things like that. You know, I mean, you're, you know, and it, you're, you're on a compressed day, the first practice day to get as much in as you can. And you also, you want to make a long run and to see where the car, which way the car's going because the 125s is only uh, 50 laps, right? Um, so... That would be right. the longest run we do. We still have to make a gas stop, but um, you want to test that too prior to going. You want to see if the car is going to go to the tight side or loose side, or you know, you know, and 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 run the motor, get get a good idea what the mo which way the motor's going. Try to plan it for the weather. I mean, you're you're trying to play uh, a weatherman a day out to adjust the motor accordingly. And then you wake up on. Sunday morning and it's 90 degrees and humid <laughs> instead of being 50 degrees and cold, you know. Or, it's quite a difference for yeah. a motor, a carbureted motor at the time. Absolutely. Uh, and that, again, listeners, we're talking carburation. We're not talking, you know, fuel injection, you know. I mean, huge, huge difference, you know. So, um, so is it controlled chaos or is it uh, we're thrashing to the last second? You know, even... Or is it just kind of like easy going? Uh, no, it wasn't easy going, but it was very controlled chaos, I'll say that. But the group of guys 
we just worked so good together. And the young man that was helping us on the tires did, did his job and did his job good. And and everybody kind of like, hey, I'm done. Can you need help with something? What can I do now? What can, you know? And it was a lot of of hand, minimum hands, but hands in the pot, keeping it going. You know what I mean? And so, people that knew what they were doing didn't have to be necessarily told, other than like you say, what needs to be done. Not people standing around going, you know, looking around going, huh? We we had knowledgeable people, and we had people that were just so grateful to be there helping. And, and you had to. You didn't have to babysit them, but you had to make sure that nothing was going amiss. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, you didn't, you, yeah. You, the, the trust wasn't there to just turn them, turn them loose, turn them loose, you know? Yeah, yeah. So. But, I mean, you know, it, it's. Now we were it's, never. I mean, you'll see some pictures that you'll post that you'll see with me going through tech. I'm pretty laid back, and you can see the smoke coming out of my ears just thinking, <laughs> you know. Um, well, I'm sure in this case you're thinking. Oh, did we forget anything? I mean, I, I'm, I would assume you guys had, you know, like back then, you know, you'd make the list and put it on the side of the car and check it off. And, you Absolutely. Know, you know. One of the things that happened with me and Dick being the guy he is, is um, Gary Nelson was the director of competition at that time. And they were, I went over to the box and picked the plate I wanted, the restrictor plate I wanted. And they, they hold it up over their head and they walk back and... <coughs> They put it on, and then you yes. put the carburetor on and start tightening it. Well, Gary Nelson had saw that one of the carburetor studs was loose. Oh, so okay. So for the people watching this, that if you leak air, you could pick up horsepower. So but that wasn't intentional, was it? I this mean, was, was it? not intentional at all. You know? <laughs> You're we like, were lucky, I should have thought of that. <laughs> we were lucky to be there. You know what I mean? It's, you know. Right. We're not cheating anything. Right. So he wanted me to take the carburetor back off, and he watched oh. me while I tightened that stud. Up. Well, actually, he had me pull it out, and he checked it, and then I put it back in and tightened it up. Well, now we're running a little late. They're saying, hurry, hurry. Everybody else is in line. We're trying to go get in line to qualify. Right. Here comes the linkage and off. I'm, Here comes the spring and, and all I, the springs. Oh, no. And I'm hurrying and no excuse. But I had put this space around backwards. And then I checked it and checked it to make sure it wasn't going to lock up on the air care, air cleaner. The right. The air box. And uh, Dick went out to qualify and he says, throttle stuck. Uh. <laughs> so luckily at Daytona you hold it wide open all the way around anyway. You know, yeah, so. no North Wilkesboro yeah. hanging up. And and yeah, let's. So you practice. Let, let's go back to practice. So you guys are out practicing. I don't know who's got radios. You know, I'm, I would assume you do. Rodney's got one. Dick's got one. Yeah, obviously. You know, he's out there running. Is Dick a talker? Dick uh, just kind of middle of the road there? Is he just, I'm sure only he's sharing organizing. What's going on. Only when something needs to be said as far as we need to do this, we need to do that, or. We need to raise the car up, or we need something, you know, a shock change, or, or check the toe. It's a little dirty, anything like that, you know. That's and, his terminology, dirty. Yeah, Can you use that terminology. Okay. And uh, yeah, what's him? Some of his terminology. Sorry to get off track, but what's him? Some of his terminology because everybody's different. The beer's warm. The beer's cold. <laughs> <laughs> but Dick, yeah, <laughs> more cigarettes. <laughs> um, no, just I mean, real. He was. He was. Um, he he wasn't over engineering type. It, it was very down to earth, very common, very uh, precise. Um, let's do this. Let's do that. Or what do you think we should? We could do this, or we could do that. To Rodney, and then and then we'd make the adjustments. You know, um, we were practicing pretty well. We were we were definitely going to make the one twenty fives. I mean, everybody does, but we were definitely fast enough to make the show, even if we had to fall back on time. Oh, okay. You know. And, but that had to kind of oh absolutely Kyle's five what five six and now you now you feel six five I'm sure if not higher <laughs> and and so then we then we, when we went out to qualify we ended up you know you don't know till everybody goes you know what I mean and right. you don't know which race you're in the first race second right. race and we ended up uh, you're on the pole third or second <laughs> yeah thirteenth or something like that I think wow did, that's great know, so for <laughs> for a car that didn't even exist <laughs> two weeks Basically, before two you're, weeks you're before that, yeah. the top 15 that's incredible wow yeah. wow brought him out ran a truck race last year ran a Winston Cup at the end of the season look at Dick Trickle that 65 that blue car up on the outside he's given that thing a great ride he's been shown Present time, 15th on the field. Ah, they say there's some smoke coming out of number 63, the purple car. Three wide for that 15th position. There you see the 63 trickle. Musgrave is in there. Boy Allen, 
Chuck Bound, Jim Bound's brother in that 95 up on the outside. This is the war to make it into the race. A lot of them are going to go back on the trailer when this is over and start a very lonely ride home. We went home that night after qualifying and it was like weight lifted off our shoulder. Now we got to come back and right. run the 125s. We got it. We're going to make a pit stop. We're just going to probably do gas and right side tires. Um, we brought my son in and a couple other people to change tires for us and help us. Uh, you know, my son's a pretty yep. good tire changer. Kyle Harvey Jr., yeah. yeah. And uh, he was already had, a, you know, somewhat of a good reputation as a the gun. Uh, pretty yeah. quick. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> and so we were going to make a pit stop and we did. And we, we ended up, we, he, before you go there, uh, in qualifying, did you tape off at all? Or did you say, you know what, we're not going to risk that? I mean, you almost got to somewhat tape no, off. No, we did but everything, I mean... and we put um, we put piss in there for oil so that we could make horsepower. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, I don't, I hate to say that, but I mean, well... you, know, you know, we put some really light oils in it. We put, we took the the bearings and did different bearings that we had oiled instead of greased. You know, and wow, okay. So we had to do all that and change that all back for the race. You know, so. So I'm kind of, yeah, yeah, and again, sorry to, to kind of backtrack a little from, we'll get to the qualifier in a second, because uh, that was, you know, near the end of that race on TV, you guys are on there, you know, pretty well, because you're near the transfer spot, but anyway, um, yeah, I mean, um, some people just don't take that chance at all, because they don't want to, you know, you got one motor, you don't want to cook it, you know, and I'm, and I'm sure you can keep an eye on it, and that's only one or two laps, but still, it's like, oh, like qualifying, absolutely, <clears throat> you know, you can't, you know, we ice them down and all that kind of stuff, too, you know, but um you know it put us in where we needed to be um we were elated with that type of qualifying lap sure lap. and then uh in the and then we get to the 125s and like you said we had a we ran middle of the pack and then one by one either through um somebody falling out or cautions or something we ended up you know knocking on the door of the transfer spot the lock automatic lock in spot and we ended up two spots better than that. And was that cool. just Dick taking it easy though? I mean, I think so. And I think it's your like your concern. I think it was like we aren't. We're going to be in, and we're not probably not going to go home. And we don't need to wreck this car, kind of thing. You know. So. If you wreck the car, you're probably going home. And if not, you're thrashing unless you bend that frame. You know. Yeah. And yeah. And you're not getting any sleep from Thursday to Sunday is a long time. <laughs> so yeah, it's I can't imagine. Yeah, I'm sure you would have had help. Well, well, even Friday, even Friday, there was nothing going on, on the track, but we were allowed to come to the track and work on the car, so we prepped it for, for um, uh, Friday and Saturday. You know, and, and when was happy hour then? Was well, it we Saturday do a, you or? do a Saturday, and you do happy hour right before the bush race, you, early Saturday before the bush race. Gotcha. And uh, so, if we if we want to continue, keep going at that point, at at. After the uh, Bush race, after happy <clears> hour, <throat> um, we had some concerns about the motor, and the engine builder said... Because you're smoking a little bit in that yeah, qualifying Yeah, correct, race. correct. So the Just engine builder touch. said that... It kind of came and it kind of went, it looked like on TV. Absolutely. At first we thought it was a tire, but then we realized it was... Uh, and Dick said the motor was making a noise, you know, also. You know what I mean? It was like, change tunes, it was... Not like, crisp, you know. It's like, there's my heart, where'd it go? It's down there somewhere. <laughs> Ex absolutely. And then... Um, it, it, the, the engine builder said that there was a plane coming back to Charlotte and he was going to, and Kenny Wallace was sending a motor back. So he said, if you pull a motor out and send it back, I'll go through wow. it for you. And so we were allowed to get in the garage early on Sunday morning and the motor was back and they went through it. So you were not at happy hour practice then? No, this happened in happy hour. This happened after oh, happy hour. Oh, okay. We practiced happy <clears throat> hour, and then we sent the motor back to, to Charlotte to get Less the, than 24 hours. Correct. Wow. Correct. And he freshened Sweating the whole time. <laughs> he, sure. he freshened it up. Plane and, back, plane back, plane back. And trying to be uh, very uh, conscientious about putting the motor back in and everything like that, we pretty much checked everything. I'll be very, very honest with you, and I'm not making excuses for our team. They were really good guys. But um, when the motor came back from the engine shop, on Ford engines back then and, and the cylinder heads, they had dash 12 um, fittings in the cylinder heads, and they were a 45-degree fitting. And I never checked any of them, should have. 
and they both, I, I remember distinctly, even though it's been a long time, I can't remember names, they both had Teflon tape in the, on the threads, and we put the motor together and put it in, and we were literally pushing it out there right as the national anthem was starting. Back then they had the 125 yeah. follow by and, yeah. and um, I think we ended up well, like 13, 13, 13, 13, 13. We stopped them at, we were in 12th, there was no sense in even going forward and weren't, because that was our only car, our only engine, and we stopped them at that point and said just ride because there was no threat and we're in the race. Yeah. yeah. But you guys started smoking, just a touch of smoke they showed on TV, a few laps to go. Oh, the 125s? Yeah. 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 Showed it on TV. Um, but that was the motor that Larry Wallace had put in for a qualifying. Yeah. Oh, qualifying you ran the qualifying motor for the 125. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. And then he pulled. That's when the whole um, issue with the change uh, motors. Yeah. And change motors. And, them, yeah. yeah. So, because they had, um, we ran the 125. He left that motor in all the way through practice, I believe, on Saturday, and that's when everybody kind of changed over their race motor. And so here it was Sunday morning, and that's what happened. So. We we actually um, did um, put the race motor in and practice. I think it was Saturday before the bush was race. It? Okay. And then we were, had something wrong. I don't remember, to this day. I can't remember what was wrong with the motor. But Larry said, "Pull it out and send it back." Didn't up Dick here. say something on the radio? So I thought you said he said something. That was in the race. What yeah. He said on the race, to me. But um. And then we, so we pull it out and put it on an airplane and sent it back to, back here to Mooresville. And Larry went through it overnight and they brought it to the track Sunday morning. They put it in.